Welcome to Into the Woo, a wellness podcast hosted by Alice Hu. I will be exploring the world of crystals, energy healing, spirit guides, and more to help you understand how they can unlock your potential. These concepts have helped me discover my purpose and my truth, and I can't wait to hear how they will inspire you. I'll show you how they can be accessible and powerful tools in your life. I'm back with another spirituality and modern mysticism Q&A. This is one of my most favorite series of the podcast where I answer questions from you. So today I have a couple questions. The first one is, what is a dark night of the soul? Excellent question. So the dark night of the soul is a period of your life, and sometimes it can happen multiple times in your life where you're up leveling, reaching a new state of consciousness and understanding, kind of like shedding the old you, old ways of thinking and beliefs and entering a new version of yourself. Now, it's really not always an easy experience. More often than not, it's a difficult one where we begin to understand hey, this isn't working for me, whether it's a belief, a framework, your reality, and we begin to discover what we need to change. Sometimes it can feel like a rock bottom. You might feel helpless, hopeless, and just kind of almost feels like there's just lots of different bad things happening to you. But honestly, like I always say, that things are happening for you, not to you. And it's an opportunity to shift your mindset, way of thinking, from negative to positive, to understanding that things are happening for you, for your highest good, and for you to learn something extremely important for your personal and spiritual growth. It's also really an opportunity to face your shadow self. And what is the shadow self? It's, you know, a part of us that we hide our shame and securities or fear and just everything that you've kind of, let's say, put on a mental shelf and you're like, let me get back to this. But every so often these things come up again and you need to address them, um, kind of like dirty laundry. But, you know, to see the light, you really must know the darkness. And so the shadow self is a wonderful opportunity for you to understand yourself better. And it definitely feels that the United States is also going through a dark night of the soul as well. So many things coming up, so many things coming into the light. And now that we've truly seen them, that we really can't go back to the way things were. So structures, power dynamics are changing. And so, you know, things won't feel great for a minute, but It's definitely for our highest good as we move collectively, personally, if you're also going through a dark night of the soul journey and reaching the other side of more understanding, more feeling of balance and harmony. To really heal ourselves and our country, we have to examine the shadow self as a collective and at the individual level. Are you personally feeling like you're going through a dark night of the soul journey? How can I help you and what support do you need? I'll add some links to meditations that I found very helpful and rituals. Developing rituals has been crucial in me maintaining positive outlook and better habits. Speaking of better habits, the next question is, Why do you always tell us not to look at our phones right when we wake up? So I know that developing a consistent morning and evening ritual may be difficult, especially if you don't really have one in your practice. But the one thing that I always recommend that you start putting into your daily routine is to not look at your phone when you wake up. When you look at your phone right upon waking, it really jolts you awake. And I know that it's so common to do, and we definitely have an addiction to checking our emails, text messages, social media, and all that. But it's very jarring to look at your phone. And it starts you off thinking about how to serve others and meeting the needs of others, whether it's your boss, a coworker, friends, family, 
um, a, a local store asking you to support them uh, for something or buy something from them, it doesn't let you center yourself. So already right when you wake up, you're being pulled into many different directions. If you just spend, let's say, the first five minutes, 15 minutes of your day just waking up with no distractions, brushing your teeth, making coffee, breakfast, whatever it is, and just finding a moment of stillness and a pause, kind of like a transition between sleep and you know your waking state and the start of the day, you'll just feel a lot better. You'll be able to address anything that work life throws at you because you've started your day in a more peaceful way. And I can talk you know, time and time again about how great it is to have a morning or evening ritual and to not look at your phone when you wake up. But honestly, just try it for yourself and you will definitely feel a difference. So try it for just a week. You can do anything for a week. Don't look at your phone the first 15 minutes of the day and don't look at your phone uh, the last 15 minutes of the day as well. Ideally, I would say don't look at your phone for like 30 minutes to 60 minutes at the start and end of the day, but really small steps. See where you can start first. Okay, so this last question is a juicy one. A couple weeks ago, I was doing an Instagram live and I don't remember how this came up, but I mentioned that meditation and sex are very similar. And someone just asked me, what do you mean? Can you explain a little bit more about how they are similar? So meditation and sex really allow us to access altered states of consciousness. There have been comparisons of an orgasm with connection to the divine. Some people use their sexual energy to help them with their manifestations side note more on that and Tantra in a later episode in just a few weeks, I think, maybe next month. If you're familiar with the chakra system, you know that sexual energy is from the sacral chakra. It's the second one in our bodies. It's represented by the color orange and really where creativity, pleasure, joy, sensuality live. It's also, you know, the seat of creation too, to create, um, you know, another living person, a project, a business, you know, sexual energy is creative energy. Now that you understand how powerful sexual energy is and how meditation and sex are related, it's also important to note that, you know, who you share your energy with, who you have sex with is also really important to consider. Energy is exchanged through sex and it creates a really strong spiritual, emotional, physical bond. And if it's not with the right person, it may be difficult to let that person go because of those strong bonds that you've made with that person. Those are all the questions I have for you this week. As always, please submit any questions that you have. I can't wait to answer them. If you didn't know, every single month I teach a digital sound bath that is 45 minutes, as well as a chakra healing yoga class that ends with a sound bath shavasana. These two classes I teach every single month. I'd love for you to join me to connect more with your body and forge a stronger mind-body-spirit connection. Every so often, I'll also host some special workshops in December. There are many. There is a astrology for 2021 workshop as well as a manifestation class for the year ahead. Check the show notes for more information.